Hey guys, in this video I wanted to show you how you can write piano music like Philip Glass. Let's dive in. Okay, so Philip Glass is uh, a film composer and American minimalist. We would have heard his music on films like The Hours and Dracula and The Watchmen. Uh, his music is absolutely fantastic, it's stunning, it's beautiful and it's of its own language basically. Uh, when I started learning about Philip's, Philip Glass's music, it completely changed, changed my perspective on writing music and I'm so grateful for the output that he's produced because it's really helped me on my journey and hopefully this video will help you. If you don't know Philip Glass's music, go check it out, but a little bit of understanding about it is his work, his music relies heavily on rhythmic groupings groups of notes in certain numbers, so not necessarily rhythmic groupings, but the amount of notes within an arpeggio or a, uh, a motif or a uh, ostinato. And it also relies on certain harmonic language, the, usually the use of accidentals outside of the key that you're in, or at least borrowing an accidental from another key that's related. So let's jump straight in. I'm going to give you an example. So his music relies heavily on groupings and arpeggios and rhythms. So let's ignore the uh, cross rhythms and things that he does. So let's think about groupings of numbers, right? A minor arpeggio, three notes. So he'd go like this. That's three notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Now what happens if underneath that you add two notes playing the same? So kind of like this. Nice. That's just an example <laughs> of the type of stuff he produces. And it just seems to write itself when you think in terms of these numbers. I mean, that's a really simplified approach of what he does. Um, I also want to highlight the fact that I am using Spitfire Labs free glass piano, which I've rated in one of my top uh, free piano VSTs in this video. Now go get this because this is a recording of Philip Glass's actual uh, grand piano. It's, it's beautiful and it's free. So <laughs> winning. Okay, let's, uh, let's return. I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, grab my pencil tool and I'm going to write this in because it's all very well me playing it on my piano and you listening. You could just listen to Philip Glass. But if I show you in the, in the piano roll, you might get a better understanding of what, I, what it is I'm talking about. So up here, you've got the division of the bars in um, quarter notes. So I'm so used to saying in like uh, quavers and grotchets, which is what we say over here in England. Uh, doesn't make any sense. Sounds like crisps. Okay, so I'm going to make these into eighth notes. So we're going to have, what that means is we would have eight of those in a bar. Okay, some of you might be like, oh, Rich, this, what is this, a music theory lesson? And I'm going to say, yes, it is a little bit, just because it's really important that you grasp this. Eight notes within a whole bar, hence they're called eighth notes. Okay, so if I play that, cool, that sounds like the start of a uh, Steve Reich piece, uh, another minimalist. So what we're going to do is we're going to rely on arpeggios. I'm going to stay, stay in the key of A minor. I like a minor key. And the example I used was uh, using this, basically. A minor arpeggio in threes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And eventually, so if you notice that actually the arpeggio then bleeds into the next bar, 
and it should, by the end of three bars, reach its cycle again of being on the A on the downbeat. Okay, so this is, and just just for the sake of my my own sanity, let's put a <laughs> the sustain pedal on. No, not modulation. Let's put the sustain pedal on, uh, just because it then makes it sound so much more. I mean, even with no velocity changes, uh, it sounds so much better like that. So here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. La, Isn't that nice? We have two hands, okay? You know this. This is my right hand playing this. So now I need to think about my left hand. And I'm going to say, left hand, I'm going to take this, I'm going to drop this down to an A. And Philip Glass likes to explore different note lengths, different uh, time divisions. So he could put this as triplets, tuplets, or eighth notes or quarter notes, etc. I'm going to turn this into a quarter note. So what happens now? If this is so I'm just going to show you what I, obviously what happens now. I'm going to show you what I was playing when you heard me playing on the keyboard. A group of three notes as eighth notes played over a group of two notes as quarter notes. You with me? And if you take this and start putting this in strings, oh man, it's like, hello, act two in my trailers is done. It's very cool. I mean, I could listen to that all day. Well, not maybe not all day, I'm probably a little bit crazy. Now what happens then if you, I'm sorry, I'm getting really excited. The point here is, he doesn't just do this. He then says, okay, well, let's select all of this. Let's, ooh, blimey, what's going on here? Let's move this and put these over to here. But this time, when my pattern repeats, I'm going to turn this into a three-note pattern of eighth notes. Like this. Ooh, let's have a listen. I like your jam, sir. Okay, now what I ask of you is to listen to that again and think in terms of how this affects the pace. You've extended the length of the grouping. I'm sure you figured out, yeah, dude, that slows it down. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and that's one of the things he explores so beautifully in his music, is the effect of changing these patterns and what it has on the music. So then we could say, okay, well, if this slows it down, let's repeat that again, of threes, but this time my right hand is going to play a pattern of four. I'm just sticking in arpeggios, guys. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just, it's just an A minor arpeggio. And now we're gonna to listen to what effect that has. So. <coughs> Again, it slows it down a little bit, but that's that's okay because then you can say, well, I'm going to go back to this, my my beautiful two notes, because it gives it this dung 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 dung. It gives it this kind of like marching feel. But then what happens if I then take that pattern and I say instead of it going to be eighth notes, it's going to be sixteenth notes, and I'm going to do six of them. Do, 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 one, two, three. I'll quantize you. Four, five, six. I can count to six. <laughs> right. 
and then we're going to copy this, copy this, copy this. Now this is the essence of what is writing is, exploring the groupings of numbers, the groupings of arpeggios mixed with the length of the notes. Nice. I rest my case. Uh, I mean, can you see how you're not writing anything new in terms of like melody and harmony here? You're just you're just messing around with the groupings of the arpeggio, and that is how you use Philip Glass's writing style to really expand your ability to utilize pace in your music. So this is the slowest bit. In fact, actually, no, this bit is the slowest bit. We're going to swap that. I am. Oh, come on, dude. Oh. There we go. Okay, it started to speed up a little bit now. It's getting into a nice groove. I like it. Okay, so if ever any of you want to know how you can take your chord progression and make it feel like it's progressing without changing the progression, this is how. This is how I write a lot of my piano music for the, the movie trailers that I've uh, had my music on. It's such a simple win because you can go from, say, act one. Oh, delicate, soft, beautiful, to act two. Pace, drama, you know. Awesome. Okay, now let's move a little bit further. Now, there are the extensions on this knowledge, but I'm going to leave it at this because I want you to then start to explore how you can take these numbers and these groupings and things and start writing your own stuff. Uh, it's really fantastic. And that's just only two parts. What if you give this to a group of string players and you've got four string lines all going gangbusters on whatever it is they're playing? Awesome. Right now, let's say we're going to stick with a simple chord progression. Uh, we're going to go from A minor to F. So that's one, six, one minor, six major. Okay, that's the first chord and the sixth chord. Now all we need to do for that then is move this E up to an F. And I might actually turn this into an octave. So we've got this. Now this isn't just, I mean, that sounds great. Sorry, I'm stopping here. This isn't just about you being able to write beautiful arpeggios that develop using different rhythmic patterns. This is also about you kind of understanding a little bit about Philip Glass's harmonic language. I talked about him throwing in some cheeky notes here and there, some little uh, little chromatics to kind of bring the tension. And what he's doing with these chromatic notes is he's forcing a cadence. And what I mean by cadence, obviously every chord changes a cadence, but he's forcing the tension of the cadence. The cadence is like kind of the end, basically. It makes you feel like that is coming to an end and it needs to return. That needs to return back to A minor. But the tension there isn't great. It's one of the reasons why there's such a nice sequence. So how is he going to force the cadence with this? Just 
chuck in a cheeky little chromatic. And in this instance, that was an E flat within an F. So making an F7 in the A minor key. What? I mean, what are you thinking, sir? What are you thinking? I'm thinking this sounds awesome. So here we go. Okay, do you hear how that works? Now let's try that as a different example. We're going to go back to A minor and we're going to go to, I don't know, E? I mean, this one is already filled with... This is already filled with that kind of like awkwardness because it's the fifth chord. It, it wants to give, it's giving you that perfect cadence. The fifth to the first chord. So I'm going to drop this A to a G sharp, keep that as an E, this is going to go to a G sharp, this is going to go to a B, this is going to go to stay on an E, this is going to go to a G sharp. So we're going to go from an A, I mean that already sounds a bit like Philip Glass doesn't it, because he uses that progression quite a lot. So. We're going to go from an A minor to an E. But Rich, you talked about throwing chromatics in. So what happens if we go A minor to E and we throw in... another chromatic. A little chromatic step, shall we say. Uh, now notice I'm doing it on the first note, so that's the E. So we want to go, where's my E? There you are. I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of them, so I'm gonna do four. I could drop that down to E flat to make it a major seven, and then there to make it a dominant seven. Nice, it works really nicely. Now what happens if we then go A minor to E, although actually we're ending on and then we chuck in a flat third on the top instead of a major third within the E major chord. Just breaking all the rules. nicely but it achieves the same thing it gives you that like uh, feeling like this is all wrong because it wants to return back to our delicious uh, our lovely A minor our home okay so that's one simple way that you can take a single note and turn it into something more. So you're taking, you're turning, you're essentially turning your whatever chord you're going to into a, into a dominant or perhaps even, you know, an, a, a 13. Where are you, 13? I'll get there. Somewhere. An extended dominant chord, basically. Um, and I'm going to leave it there, because what I want you to take from this is I want you to take about the number groupings, the durations of the notes within that number groupings, and then just taking whatever chord progression it is that you're working with and adding chromatic movements in there. It doesn't have to always be a dominant, as we've shown here. I mean, it could be, you know, going full on Beatles and dropping everything going from a major to a minor. No rules. Well, there are, I mean, actually there are. There are rules and we are sticking to them. Uh, but they're just different rules. Different rules. Um, and this is how you write piano music, like Philip Glass. 
I hope you enjoyed this and I really would love to hear any of your tracks that you write as a result. Thanks guys. <laughs>